Personal notice. Dangers my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Every Shot Counts, another adventure of George Valentine. Mr. Valentine, sir, I'm a cowboy movie star sure you must have seen me sometime, even if it's only on television. Uh, well, anyway, I, I know how silly it sounds, but uh, I need help. There's the most desperate situation that requires the action of a hero. And while I'd like to qualify, this same situation requires certain proficiency that I haven't got. Notably, there's a mystery. Mysteries aren't my longest suit. Uh, you see, I met her. Uh, her, I mean, but just barely. And Mr. Valentine, this lovely young lady I refer to, she's in distress. She is. But, Mr. Disbro, in your letter you didn't tell us... Daphne. That's who she is. Oh. Daphne. Daphne, huh? Yeah. I met her just the other day, you realize. I was talking to a man I know, a song plugger. That's like a fuller brush man, only with music, you Uh see. Uh, He pointed her out. Uh, You know the type, Miss Brooks, a little schoolteacher type that's always having westerns, you know, big, bashful blue eyes and hair like honey and a heart just as big as all out of doors, you know. With a head to match. (laughs) I know. Uh, Who cares if she's smart? I don't. Uh, Anyway, I find this little girl lives all alone, way up in the Imperial Crest Apartments. Uh-oh, I take it back. <laughs> Daphne does all right, doesn't she? Oh, uh, she has money, but she's nervous, if you know what I mean. So nervous, she'll hardly talk. And afraid, oh, yeah, I, I think somebody's watching her up there. Well, I'm not surprised. A big bad wolf, maybe. Uh, me? No, no, this is different, no. It is. She didn't even want to meet me, and most women do. Oh, now, look, cowboy. Yeah, and today when I tried to talk to her on the street, even after I'd been properly introduced, she just up, walked away. So am I. Now, wait no, wait a minute, Mr. Valentine. She wanted to talk, and she would have if the man she walked away with hadn't been carrying a gun. Oh. So maybe it is a case, huh? What man? Big. Bigger than both of us. Black hair and sour face. Her husband, maybe. Oh, no, she told me she wasn't married. I don't know who he is, but she's afraid of him, all right. Uh-huh. And what do you want me to do, scare him away? No, figure it out, Mr. Valentine. Go meet her. And protect her before something worse happens. And then let me know before it does. Oh, I see. That's it. I do the dirty work, hand you the answers, and then you step in to scare away the rustlers. And win the girl, of course. Well, that's right, honey. And having to keep my public name intact, uh, my fans and all, you know, I... I'm a beautiful patsy. Okay, partner. But don't think you've got a corner on the market. Hey, what the... <laughs> I put your cigarette out, didn't I? Well... One shot at 30 feet, that's pretty good. Oh, but I missed the sandbag again. Look at them holes in my wall. Hey, lady, you got holes in your head. Oh, now, what? don't be angry. I'm practicing here on my roof garden. Now, see that clay pipe down there? <laughs> I never oh. missed. Oh, fine. You must make a big hit with lots of people. Well, my landlord and neighbors do complain once in a while. See the other pipe? Hey, you. But I talk them out of it. Well, now, look, I don't talk so easy. Don't you? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Not when you're around, you mean. Oh, right, Annie Oakley. So you're nice to look at. Daphne. Daphne Crockett. Girl type Davy. Crockett? Oh, of course. The club parrot. Mm Mm-hmm. I've been there five years. Longest run of any act in nightclubs. Everybody likes my shooting. (laughs) Oh, so that's it. Little Red Riding Hood turns out to be two-gun Nelly. Professional bullseye artist. Mr. Valentine, where are you going? To see the bull about some black eyes. He... No, no, wait a minute. 
I'm here now. I might as well speak my piece, even if it's only for laughs. Speak your piece? Like Miles Standish? In a way. Only John Alden's name this time is Rafe Disbro. Oh, him. Yeah, yeah. He's funny, all right. He thinks you're in danger. The cowboy says you're being watched up here. He says what? Well, there's the building next door. I guess from that one apartment over there, you could oh, probably... Oh, no. No, of course not. All right, lady. But the rest of my recitation says you're afraid of a big man, black hair, sour face. How about that one? Mr. Disbro has quite an imagination, hasn't he? Maybe. And maybe not. I suppose he sent you over here to protect me. That was a general idea. And think twice before you say no. I'll show you what I think of Mr. Disbro in spite of that lovely Texas accent. You see those three little dolls in a row? Lady, I said think twice. And there are three bullets left in this gun. Oh, now, look, if you are in trouble, Daphne... Three answers you can take back. Okay, lady, never mind. We get the idea. This is where we came in, Angel. (laughs) Hey, that was four. Miss Crockett, Daphne! No, I'm all right. Oh, God, it missed me. What missed you? Where'd that extra shot come from? No. No, there wasn't one. Get out of here, won't you? Please leave me alone. Please, leave me alone. Don't waste your breath, lady. We've already gone. George, shall I telephone Lieutenant Riley? No, he's on vacation. Ask for Clary and tell him to get up there fast. Yeah, but you I got a date next door, Angel. See you in the second reel. There's a card outside this apartment. Says R. Siever. You him? I don't know. You? Now look, Bright Eyes, I want you to look. A guy comes busting in, upsets my equilibrium. I'm teaching myself to nasty. Now go away. All right, don't mind me. I won't tell if you cheat. Your manners get worse. The door's back that way. Remember? Yeah, just call me a building inspector. Come to take a look at your window, that's all. Don't fall out. Yeah. Yeah, this is it, all right. The only apartment from which you can see the roof garden. You don't say. The only apartment from which you could take a pot shot at a woman across the way there. Sit down. Maybe we could both learn canasta. You always wear a hat when you play cards? Sure. What woman? What's it cover up? Black hair to match your sour face? I said what? We don't like each other much, do we? Daphne Crockett. I was there when it happened. Now we like each other less, huh? I don't know. Friendship begins slow sometimes. Sit down, will you? I'll deal out a few. What do you use for chips? The bag there? Huh? The black bag there by your foot. The one you're trying to keep me from seeing. A real observant boy, aren't you? Oh, wait a minute. I can see a hand when it starts to move, so stop moving it. I'm dealing this, Inspector. Oh, no, you're not. You're... <laughs> Too bad nobody can argue with a blackjack, Inspector. We might have had a nice little game. Oh, oh, hey, you know, you know what? Everybody's got the atom bomb. Oh, Josh, your head hurt. <laughs> Shall I tell you what hit you, Valentine? No. But don't tell me that's Lieutenant Clary's voice, not at last. At last. Valentine, if you wait for the police once in a while, or better yet, if you wouldn't get mixed up in cases like All this... right, all right. You sound just like Riley. My headache's bad enough. Uh, his name was Curly. Curly Blackson, the strong boy, wanted for ducking out of prison back east. Yeah, what was he in for? He was serving time for shakedowns. He was a blackmail artist. Blackmail? Hey, is there a little black bag still around here anyway? Never mind, of course not. No, there isn't, George. And this Curly may have been the man Rafe saw once with Daphne, but I don't think he took the shot at her across the way. He didn't talk like he did. Not to mention the small fact he had a gun, but it was still loaded and hadn't been fired for some time. He had a... So you know an awful lot, don't you, Lieutenant? Come on, wake up. Open your baby blue eyes wide. Huh? Oh, I get it. Curly's dead, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I... I know I didn't do it. No, no, no. You just slept through it, that's all. First you get mixed up in it, but then when you might be useful, you take a rain check while Curly takes a bullet. Bullet? One shot, clean as a whistle, right through the heart, from a short distance. Yeah. And he was armed. Somebody outdrew him and surprised him. And a marksman, too, huh? 
or a Mark's woman. Yeah, where is she? Where is she? Where do you think she is? Gone, of course. And why we look for her? There was all the time in the world for this to happen. All the hey, time for this. Listen, take it easy. Hey, somebody's coming. Yeah. And remember, Lieutenant, the girl didn't shoot at herself out there on the roof. And if Curly hit it... Shh, wait a minute. Keys. Sure. Sure, it's the guy who lives here, R.C. Do you want to bet? All right, friend, that's enough music. You can notice us now. Grab him. Hey, uh, sit. Okay, put down that stick, Buster. That's better. Well, a little surprised, that's all. If you can let me go, I'm all right. You're all right. Sure. That at that bum, you're breaking my heart. Never leave it too and unfinished. <laughs> Had to finish it, that's all. Say, didn't expect a room full of roses. Sit down. Roses are in seventh place this week, you know that? My name's Clary. Homicide. All right. Sit down. Sit. Listen, my friend. Hold on, Lieutenant, just a minute. Roses are number seven, huh? How's Jealous Heart? A little raise on records down in sheet sales, though. <laughs> oh, but you ought to hear the blues number I've song got. Song plugger, huh? Maybe even the same song plugger who once introduced a cowboy to a girl. Maybe. I don't know. Play piano down at the Club Paris, too. The Club pa- Oh, all begins to tie together, doesn't it? My friend, we're going to pull up our chairs for a nice long talk. <laughs> Be careful, don't stub your toe. What? Chairs are all nailed down. Keeps the maids from moving them around. Keeps them... <laughs> keeps them in. Look, Looney, Daphne Crockett was being watched from here, and I doubt if Curly did it. She was shot at from here, but he didn't do it. Did it, do it, did it. My name's Seaver, Lieutenant, not Looney. Seaver. Dick Seaver. Dead Eye Dick, they call me. Dead Eye? And Curly was murdered by a dead... Well, brother, if you're crazy enough to wait admit minute, it... Wait a minute, Lieutenant, wait a minute. Chairs nailed down, that stick you carry. You haven't even noticed the body yet. You haven't been watching Daphne, have you, dead eye? Of course not. I couldn't. I'm blind. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. How good are you at predicting the weather? Standard of California knows what the weather's going to be like in your area months in advance. They use this knowledge to blend Chevron Supreme gasoline according to the varying climatic conditions in your region throughout the year. Further, Chevron Supreme is climate-tailored according to each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. That's why you can depend on it to get the best out of your car every month in the year, wherever you drive in the seven western states from Canada to Mexico. Try a tank full of premium quality Chevron Supreme tomorrow. Watch how much better your car responds to its climate-tailored power, faster starts, faster pickup in traffic, and ping-free power on hills. You'll find you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Ask for Chevron Supreme at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Murder by a Marksman. Yes, the big, dark-haired, sour-faced guy, Curly Blackson, was killed by a single, neat shot aimed directly at his heart. The only trouble is it happened in the apartment of a man who was blind, Dick Seaver. Across the way, however, lives a girl who was afraid of Curly, Daphne Crockett. And Daphne can really shoot. But if your name is George Valentine, you also remember that Daphne was once shot at. And while the police go looking for her... You go to see the man who talks as though he'd seen too many of his own movies, Rafe Disbro. Gosh, Mr. Valentine, that's all I can say is, gosh. Well, you should try harder, Mr. Disbro. Usually there's just the good men, the bad men. And the little schoolteacher in between, I know. Well, this isn't the plot of a western. 
But why you really wanted us to meet Daphne, you didn't say. So suppose you start saying, Buster, right now. What? I, uh, I told you she was in distress. Are you being blackmailed, cowboy? Uh-huh. That was Curly's business, you know. And I saw a little black bag once. Blackmailed, I said. No. No, no, not me. Not you. Well, I'm always cautious about those things, but... Well, Daphne, she has another suitor besides me is Mr. Michael J. Martin. Martin? Yeah, one of those millionaire fellows. But this is strictly confidential, you understand. And you figure Martin's a better sucker than you are, huh? He is a married man, yeah, you know, and I've never taken that step. Uh-huh. And you really hired us to look into Daphne because you were afraid she was going to knock you over, too. Oh, no, no, Mr. Valentine. You totally misrepresent me. No, I mean nothing of the kind. The little lady is always innocent. Okay, Disbro. When you decide to tell me the truth, let me know, will you? But I am. I'm just a bystander who... Or had... better yet, let the police know. This is still a murder case, Rafe. And they tell me cowboys are pretty good shot. Hey, what? Oh, well, I'm just a singing cowboy, Miss Brooks. That's the last straw. No, I'm not proficient, except with a guitar. No, I don't shoot guns. Well, my fans wouldn't like it. Well, listen, I'll show you. Come on, Angel, let's get out of here. Yeah, I'm on records. They play them on the radio night and day. They drive people crazy. I'll show you. Any station. Hey, what's that? Oh, Daphne. Uh, listen, Mr. Valentine, it's a Club Paris broadcast. Daphne shooting at. There, you see? She didn't run away. She's there. I told you the little lady is always innocent. Here we are, George. Dressing room number four, three, two. Sure, sure. She's number one with a star on the door. Mm. Hey, just a moment, please. I'm very sorry, but no one's allowed inside. Well, I'm sorry, too, Shorty, but we want to see... Miss Crockett isn't receiving any callers this evening. She hopes you understand. Well, now, that's real thoughtful of her. Just step to one side. You needn't you? raise your voice, but if I haven't made myself clear... Oh, George, just pick him up and... And him. I really don't feel like arguing about Shorty, it. Shorty, get out of the... <laughs> Well, hello, Mr. Valentine. Goodbye. Oh, no, you don't. Stand still, sister. Well, I've really got nothing to say. Come along, Mike. Hey, get out of my way. Shorty, wait a minute, you. Please don't be difficult, Mr. Valentine. Mac, Fred, Joe. Slow down, I said, will you? Hey, let go. Let go, will you? Bye-bye, Mr. Valentine. Will you? All right, Mac, Fred, Joe, she's gone. You can let go. Sure, don't get sore. Let me brush your coat. The boys, huh? Stage hands, that's all. Don't want to see you getting in trouble. Buster, I'm not the one who's going to be in trouble. Oh, yes, you are. Little guy's important. Tough, too. The what? Little guy with it went with it. Uh, Michael J. Martin. Martin? You mean that little shrimp was Martin? Lucky we saved you, huh? Lion hunter, you know. Toughest little guy in the world. Best marksman, too. No, Miss Crockett isn't here. Of course she's not here. Don't expect her to show up. I even had one of our own men, Taylor, and Martin shook him off, too. All right, all right, so she's not here. You said that, Lieutenant. Little schoolteacher type, caught in the middle. <laughs> Martin's not much to look at, only five feet tall. Two million bucks you could look at. Maybe blackmail does make sense. I told you that a long time ago. But nothing else means sense. Why did Curly come out here? Why did he get killed? Oh, stop asking questions. All right, you want an answer? Curly was Daphne's husband. What? It's in the record. They used to be married. Sure. Now she was afraid of them. Sure. Let me ask you, what kind of an answer is... Does it tie together a cowboy, land hunter, Annie Oakley? Does it tell which one of those marksmen put a bullet through a man's heart with one shot? Let's not leave out Seaver. He'd be a nice guy to get caught in the middle, too. I mean, this happened up at his place across the way from Daphne's. People know that, and they know a little black bag still missing. Yes, George, and Seaver's reputation isn't so good... People might imagine he managed to get his hands on the bag somehow. All right, so he's tied in. He's a friend of Curly's, too. But Angel, let me tell you something. When we were at the Club Paris, who was playing the piano? Huh? Well, it was... Oh, George, it wasn't Dixie. Uh-huh. See what I mean? He's missing, too. And you know, Lieutenant, a blind guy who's a heel could get into trouble easily. Now, his heart's beating... Now, he's just unconscious, I think. Come on, Seaver. Come on. Snap out of it now. <sighs> His door is still open. Somebody must have slugged him when he was running out before he could get away. Oh, Daddy he beat me. My head. Oh, he's okay. Take a look inside. That's what I'm doing. It's quite a mess. It's been ransacked. 
All the drawers, only thing still in place are the first... <gasps> Michael J. Martin. Dead. Would you look at that? Another one-shot victim. Sharp shooting. Even about the same distance. Yeah. Got Martin a little higher up, though. Hmm? Yeah, look here. Hit him right in the neck. So what? He's as dead as Curly, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just... What is it, George? The window. Lights just went on there, opposite. What? Yeah, yeah, so they did. The roof garden. Oh, little Nell has finally come back home, huh? And, Lieutenant, if you work a process of elimination... Come on, let's get over there. I'll stay here. But, George... Go on, go on. I'll take care of Seaver yes, here. But... Now, I'll take you five minutes to make it from building to building anyway. All right, we'll keep our eyes open. But you watch from here. Don't worry, I've been wrong before. I'm not going to be wrong this time. Get going. Oh, Daddy, what a head. What's happening? What's happening, Mr. Valentine? Here. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Uh, thanks. Uh... Hey, that's my chair by uh, the poker table. Okay, careful now. Uh, there she is. Whew. Sit down yourself, Valentine. It's good for the rocks in your head. From the chair opposite me, the wing chair there, you can see out the window. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Already there, aren't you? I can tell by your voice. What you doing now? Nothing. Taking off a coat. Take off your coat. Take off your hat. <laughs> Cigarette? Got some right here on the table. No, thanks. Go on into the kitchen now. I bet you can't cook. You've never seen her, huh? Nope. Blind since I was 21. Lost him in a stick-up I got messed up in. Stick-up? Nice guy. Oh, I've been around. But I'm straight now. She's back on the roof now. Why do you say you're straight, Seaver, when you were all mixed up with Curly? <laughs> I didn't know he'd taken a hop from prison. He was up here all the time watching his wife, wasn't he? Sure. It's a cinch I wasn't. You were in on the blackmail with Curly, too, weren't you? Somebody must have tipped him off that there was a good touch going, that Martin here was a pushover. <laughs> all right, so what? What have I got to lose? Conspiracy to blackmail, but everybody's dead. You're right, we can't prove it. I've been around. You're not... What's that? Oh, she's just practicing, that's all. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Everybody's a marksman. You know, poor Martin there has a gun in his pocket, too, but he was outdrawn, just like Curly. That cowboy can shoot, too, Mr. Valentine. I don't believe that stuff he says to you. No, no, I'm not talking about murder anyway. I was thinking about when Daphne over there was practicing early and somebody took a pot shot and missed. What about it? Well, that couldn't have been a marksman, could it? So it must have been somebody who just stuck a gun out the window and shot to attract attention. <laughs> You've been around, too, haven't you? You knew somebody'd come running over like I did and find Curly and lock him up. He was a fugitive. Good way to get rid of a partner, a receiver. <laughs> well, she's going to work on the clay pigeons now. Good shot. Never mind her. Then what happened? Well, it didn't work, obviously. Curly knocked me out instead. So when you ducked back into the room to pick up the dough in the black bag, you found Curly alive and plenty suspicious. So you had to kill him, I guess. Oh, is that it? Now, how could a blind man do that? Then maybe later Michael J. Martin figured out who'd been in on the blackmail and came up for a little talk. So you had to kill him. <laughs> well, I guess you can't be blamed. Lots of people think I'm not really blind, but I am, see? Look. Look at the match in front of my eye. Never mind. Skip it. <laughs> it's because you are blind that I know you killed both of them. Who else but a blind man would shoot two men at the same height? A big man in the heart and a five-footer like Martin in the neck. What are you talking about? It, it, it killed him, didn't it? Like a marksman would? No, just by luck. Oh, you wanted it to look like sharpshooting, using only one bullet. But of course, you didn't know how short he was. How could you? And who else but a blind man could have outdrawn those two guys? A blind man they never even think of defending themselves against. Oh, look, somebody knocked me out and ransacked my place. Sure, you put on a good act, Eva. You had to because we almost got here in time to catch you moving his body. You're crazy, Mr. Valentine. I'm blind. I don't even know where people are. Let you can alone. tell by the sound of a voice, can't you? What? But not close enough to... Tell what chair they're sitting in? The chair that's always in the same place because it's nailed down... Well, come on now. Tell me the rest, Buster. What happens? Have you got a gun rest built someplace under the table, maybe? With a gun where you can reach it when you reach for cigarettes? Is that how it works? Shut up! <laughs> You'd like to know how it works, wouldn't you? 
You'd like to know which chair. Well, I'm not going to tell you. I'll show you. It's the chair you're sitting in. <laughs> Simple, isn't it? The blind man can fool them all. A little heavy on the downbeat, maybe. <laughs> eh, won't look like a marksman this time. Ah, but the coroner won't care. I'll just move him out of the chair and... Valentine. Valentine, where are you? Where are you? Just where I was, Siva. Huh? Standing by the side of this chair. Oh, thank you, Mr. Valentine. I can't tell you how grateful I am for apprehending that... Barman. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. He was a little twisted, I guess. George, we've got to be going. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. I asked you out here to explain about her. Oh, boy. She's really nice. She was afraid of her husband. She was afraid of what he might be up to. And, and she wasn't really mixed up uh, much with that rich man, Mr. Martin. Oh, we know, Rafe. You told us. She's a school teacher type. I hope you'll be very happy. Oh, I'm sure we will, Mr. Valentine. <sighs> well, this is the last reel, Angel. So look out for the cactus while we mount up and ride off into the sunset, leaving the little ranch house behind. Huh? Well, George, at this point, doesn't the hero usually kiss the girl? Oh, no, ma'am. Huh? He always kisses the horse. Oh. Uh. When damage shows up inside your car's engine, it's a little late to think of the wear-saving motor oil you might have used. So let me remind you now, it's a fact. RPM motor oil stops 80% of engine wear. That's the wear that happens after you turn off your car's ignition. Acid-laden moisture promptly moves in on cylinder walls, results in corrosion and rust. But it never happens when you rely on RPM motor oil. For this premium quality oil is specially compounded to keep a moisture-proof film on vital parts at all times. Even though your car stands idle for days or weeks, corrosion and rust can't harm it when RPM is in the engine. Better get it tomorrow for the car you love. Remember, RPM motor oil is first choice in the West because it stops 80% of engine wear. Ask for RPM at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, here is Robert Bailey. Who cares about the crippled lady down the road, neglected and alone? Your neighbor who needs medical attention but can't afford it? You care when you give all you possibly can to your community chest. For the money you give helps pay for visiting nurses, medicine, surgery, helps thousands of people enjoy healthier, happier, more wholesome lives. So give proudly. Enough for all community chest agencies. Enough for a full year. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Leo Cleary as Lieutenant Cleary, John Daner as Rafe, Virginia Gregg as Daphne, Clayton Post as Curly, and Walter Burke as Seaver. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>